can you introduce the beta data, why you set that, that up and uh, yeah, what, what the goal of it is? Yeah, it stands for, it, it's supposed to be an easy to remember name, unless <laughs> it doesn't work so well. Uh, database for epigenetic evaluation of treatments for aging. Right. And it's databeta.io yeah. on the web. You can read more, more about yeah. it. And th there are several ideas that go into this that are different from the way studies are usually done. One of the big things is that we think that know, we inherited this from physics, that the way to understand something is to understand the parts. And then when you understand the parts, you can put them together to get the whole. And that works great in physics. It doesn't work at all in biology. Um, mm -hmm. There's so much interaction between different interventions that you can't, uh, well, I, I guess the way to say it is we have uh, at least two dozen different interventions that will extend the lifespan of a mouse by 10%. You put all those together, you say, well, you know, 10 times uh, 10, uh, two dozen times 10 is 240%. All we have to do is do all those things together and we make the, the mouse live 240% longer. Well, that doesn't work. We know that these things interact with each other and the interactions are strong. They're not secondary effects. So I've said that we're not gonna make progress fast enough in this field by studying interventions one at a time. Mm -hmm. We need to look at combinations of interventions and be open-minded. Just to give an example of that, many of the interventions that have been tried in humans work on the insulin metabolism. Exercise and dietary restriction, every other day eating or uh, periodic fasting, metformin, berberine, um, acarbose. These are all interventions that extend lifespan in animals. We think they might work in humans. And they all work on the insulin metabolism. So you can do all of those things at once, but the insulin metabolism maxes out and you get a few years from that, but you don't get more. Mm. Um, adding, adding all these interventions together. On, on the other hand, there are some that will synergize. There's at least some data that suggests that rapamycin and metformin synergize together so that you get more life extension from rapamycin and metformin taken together than you would predict if you added the life extension from rapamycin and metformin. So this comes from some um, mouse studies. They're not unequivocal. We're, we're not even sure it's true, but at least it gives you some hope that there is, in addition to the rule, which is these interventions are likely to be redundant. You have some exceptions where the interventions are actually synergistic and you get more life extension from combining them than you would predict from looking at them separately. So, so one, of the, one of the legs on which the data beta program sits on is um, we're gonna look at combinations and not treatments in isolation. A second thing that it sits on is using methylation to evaluate. In the old days, you could do studies on animals because they live for a few years. And then uh, if, if you're patient, you can see that a mouse lives for three years instead of two years. And you can say, aha, we found something. But you can't say a, a, a human being lives for 100 years instead of 80 years because it takes a long time to do that experiment. and. Uh, we don't have the patience to, to do that. And that's where the Horvath clock is so valuable. If you believe that the Horvath clocks are good instruments for evaluating not just the biology of aging, but the interventions. In other words, if an intervention sets back the clock, it's also going to make you age slower. If you believe that, then you can use the Horvath clock to tell you much more quickly, maybe within a year or two, to tell you what's working 
and what isn't working. And the last principle that, uh, well, three, two more principles that go into the data, pro data project. One is open science. I'm uh, a child of the 60s. I don't believe in capitalism. I think capitalism has done great damage to medicine. It's a really toxic combination. And I'm not doing this to patent a, a, a regime. I'm doing this to create a database and send it out into the world. It will be open source all the way. It will be, I'll take first crack at analyzing the data because that's who I am. I'm a statistician, but then I'm going to put it right out there and people will do a much, there are better statisticians than I am around. They'll, they'll find things in the data that I couldn't find. And that's the way I want it. I want them to, I want them to find these things. I want them to get the credit for it. Uh, this is completely open source and there will be no intellectual property that comes out of the study. Um, and and the, the last thing is voluntary. We're not taking a group of people and say, all right, this is the combination of things you're taking. We're assigning you to take these supplements. We're assigning you to do this exercise routine. Maybe it would work, maybe it wouldn't, but it just seems to me, I, I don't want to manipulate anybody. I don't want to talk to the IRB, the Institutional Review Board, and tell them, uh, yeah, I'm forcing people to exercise because I think it might extend their life. I am only asking them, what are you already doing? Which means that we're not recruiting people randomly from the population. We're recruiting people who are most enthusiastic, who are already doing extraordinary things to try to extend their lifespan and every, counting on the fact that different people will do different combinations of things. So in a set of 5,000 early adopter biohackers, we'll get a good representation, a good cross-section of many different strategies for extending life. And at the end of two years, we look at their methylation at the beginning, we look at their methylation at the end, we subtract the methylation age at the beginning from the methylation age at the end, I fully expect that most of the stuff isn't working and we'll just get two years difference for most of the people. But some of it, if we're, if science is on the right track and if these people are following the science, then some of this will work and we'll find some tail of the distribution. People who are aging much slower than two years per two years. Maybe people have only aged one year in two years or one and a half years in two years. And the program is designed so that it will be able to detect that. We have enough statistical power that if somebody has gotten only one and a half years older in two years time, we'll be able to see that. And we'll be able to see, aha, look, all the people who are aging the slowest, all the people who are in this tail of the distribution aging the slowest, they're all taking drug X or they're all um, underweight, or they all have really good social relationships and they're all in close relationships with their family. We'll be able to see those things or, and hopefully in combination, we'll be, we'll be able to say at the end of this time, this is the combination of things that looks like it's the best available technology at present for extending life Let's study this combination more because this is what came out of our um, broad screen. There's a data beta study. Right. Yeah. Excellent. So can you just tell us, a little, so wh where is it right now? Have you, you're looking for 5,000 people. Do you have those? And when? No, when no. We're, we're about to begin. We're about to begin. Uh, we, we have not recruited people yet. We have a seed grant, a generous seed grant from, uh, Didier Cornell, a uh, uh, Belgian mm. enthusiast who heard one of my talks and came up to me and offered me $100,000 to get the program going. I, I didn't realize how long it's going to take to get a university on board, to get their uh, institutional review board. They, they've never seen anything like this. They say, well, where are your controls? You know, you, you can't do a study. Say, this is not your business. Your business is to keep people safe. And we're not telling them to do anything different from what they're already doing. And they say, this, this is our business. We, we need to know that your, your um, research protocol is sound and that you're not wasting people's time and money. 
So you know, we've been arguing with about that. They're used to things that you test one thing at a time. You have a control group that doesn't get it. You get the you have the test group that gets this thing. They're they really had to be brought along, and it, it was months of arguing with the instit institutional group, the IRB, right? Yeah, at McGill University, which is uh, hosting our study. Uh, it took months of arguing with them. Uh, we we just got that approval in December, and now we're finalizing relationships with labs, getting our software and our qu questionnaire debugged, and. I, I guess I've said this so often that I, I feel embarrassed how I, I promised that the, the study is going to open soon and it hasn't, but I'm, I'm predicting that this spring we'll be able to accept participants. And, and we have a short waiting list of people uh, already. Welcome more people signing up in advance and we'll let you know as soon as we're accepting uh, participants. Okay. Excellent. Yes. So Oh, is, would that be worldwide or is, is, are you only looking for North American? Uh, we're starting in North America. We have a Chinese uh, cooperator. I, I have a friend in Beijing who is going to translate the website and hire people to, um, to recruit in Beijing. We'll also have a lab based in Hong Kong that will do the analysis in parallel. And... We're talking to partners in Europe too. So we're hoping to have a branch in America, a branch in Asia and a branch in Europe. Excellent. And so- and More diversity that way, you know, we're, we're looking mm. for just as many different diverse strategies as we can evaluate. Right. Okay, excellent. And then the program is going to last two years and at the end of two years, you'll, will there be a midpoint? I mean, you're gonna do, um, a halfway review, or we have to wait two years for the results. It depends on funding. Okay. If we get enough funding that we can do methylation at a midpoint, uh, we'll do that. But the signal is stronger for two years than for mm -hmm. one year, and if if we're not uh, rolling in cash, we'll mm -hmm. just have a a methylation study at the beginning and at the end. And it, it's hard for the people who volunteer. It means, uh, what does it mean for the people who volunteer? Mm. We're gonna hold on to their DNA for two years and then we're gonna test that DNA, the, the new DNA from the two year old DNA. We're gonna put it on the same chip and analyze it at the same time. And that's to minimize the, uh, they call it the batch effect. Mm. Uh, it, there are always these random effects in any kind of uh, bio, biochemical analysis. And if you do it with the same chemicals and the same chip and the same time, you minimize that. So we're holding on to the DNA so that the two samples get analyzed together rather than use the same technique to analyze the sample now and then analyze the new sample when it comes out in two years, which means that people will have to wait uh, wait two years to find out what their methylation result is, what's their biological age, and they're not going to be happy about that. So we're, we plan to have a program where if you pay 50 or $60 extra, then you'll get um, an analysis right now. You'll get an immediate feedback on how you're doing on the biological clock. And in addition, we'll save the other half of your DNA. We'll save half of your DNA sample to analyze now, and the other half we'll save for two years so that we can do the same thing we do with everybody else's so, DNA. Uh, that's that's how we're hoping to handle the situation of people being in, impatient. And I, I imagine that the subjects won't want to wait two years to get their feedback. Right. So that's okay. That's really interesting. And the other thing is, I I guess that from this we'll also see what doesn't work, right? I mean, just as you can see what works, you can see what doesn't work. Yeah, and I, my assumption is that most of what we're doing is working. And I wish I knew which it was, because <laughs> I I take a bunch of pills. I have dietary mm -hmm. dietary changes. I have um, a rigorous exercise routine, meditation. I, I'm 
Mm -hmm. I'm doing a lot of things and I don't know how they work together. I don't know how they work individually. It'll be great to know in two years from now, maybe we will. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.